There is something special about physical media. Mmm, makes me feel good, but I just bought something that I think you're gonna love. Look at this. It's the Sony Discman. I paid $100 for it. Please don't judge me. This is of historical significance. But what if I told you this? The Sony Discman was the next level in Sony's dominance of portable music. You would totally believe me, right? Because you know, the Walkman. They literally created portable music. But what if I told you that this was also the beginning of the end of Sony's dominance of portable music? And it's a super cool story. Before CDs, it was the cassette world. And guess what dominated? This official Sony Walkman. It made music private and portable for the first time. Sony's co-founder pushed for a playback only Walkman. Even the engineers agreed that it should have record, but they didn't care. They pushed forward and then launched it with a crazy marketing campaign. You really feel the music with the Sony Walkman? The Sony Walkman is a tiny stereo cassette player with truly incredible sound. Put on a Walkman and see the world in a whole new light. They took a bunch of journalists, put them in a bus, and then took them to a park. They were told to press play, and as they did, and as they listened, a bunch of really cool 80s people whizzed by on roller skates. Not the cool inline roller skates, which aren't, I don't think anybody in, on a wheeling, with shoes with wheels, I don't think are cool. Inside Sony, Kozo Oshone, he was a division head, and he said, listen, let's just try it. I mean, what's the worst can, that can happen? He believed in quick prototyping. Build it, test it, don't wait. And they didn't, and this thing turned out to be pretty big. Everybody loved the Walkman. And for the first time in hi-fi history, the game was changed forever, but they weren't done yet. There's a bunch of technology that they were gonna jam into a square box. I almost dropped my $100 antique CD player. Speaking of technology, uh, you're gonna love today's sponsor. If you wanna support the channel, the easiest way to do it is by supporting the sponsors that support the channel. And a big thank you to today's sponsor, Boot.dev. Have you ever thought it would be cool to be a software engineer and learn how to code? Well, what if I told you that you could learn how to code by playing a game and having fun and never wanting to stop? There's a game that my daughter plays for her school and you move a car that's racing by answering math questions and she never wants to stop, which is really cool. And she's learned a ton because it's fun. It's so much like a game that you earn XP. You go on different challenges. There's bosses to beat. You get achievements, go on quests. And even if you get stuck, Boot.dev has a little character to help you out. His name's Boots. He's a wizard, a bear wizard. And he's your personal AI tutor that knows what course you're taking and what help you need by asking you questions. He just doesn't give you the answer. He just taps you on back onto the right path with a series of questions. No hand-holding by Boots, a bear wizard. Listen, apparently this computer internet thing is not going away. So they need back-end developers badly. So why not learn how to do it by playing a game? Go to boot.dev slash cheap audio man Use the code cheap audio man and you'll get 25% off your annual plan. There's no risk because they have a 30 day, no questions asked refund policy, a free demo of every interactive experience on each course. And there's a boot.dev discord community where you can talk to other humans. So get started today. Go to boot.dev slash cheap audio man. Use the code cheap audio man and you'll get 25% off your annual plan. Thank you boot.dev for sponsoring today's video. Okay, a little bit of quick history about the CD. 1982, the CD was created. Tapes were a thing, but every time it was recorded, it lost fidelity. So they needed something perfect. 16-bit digital wonderment, ones and zeros, algebra, stuff like that. Analog turned into algebra. Demo discs came back scratched, but they still worked anyway. Durability became part of the pitch. And Sony's first player, the CDP-101, sold in the millions. However, it was chained to your living room. Like that foreign exchange student that never went home. I'm just kidding. 
you set him free. Problem was, people had freedom with the Walkman. Therefore, Sony wanted to do the same thing with the Discman. And somewhere in a conference room in Tokyo, an executive came in with four jewel cases. And he said, let's make something that's the size of four. Actually, this is smaller. Four jewel, three jewel cases. So remember uh, Kozo Ashoni? He was the head of Sony's general audio division. He held up a block of wood that was exactly this size and he looked at his engineers and he said, make that play sound. And they pulled it off somehow with math and technology. They shrunk the CDP-101 into something like this. And it launched in 1984 in Japan. It was the D50. This one is the D5 and it was made in 1985. It was priced at 50,000 yen. I don't know what that conversion rate is. The problem was, all of that making CD players out of wood costs some money, R&D. Sony was hemorrhaging money, but Akio doubled down. He said, this is the way. I'd say within five years, all audio entertainment would be based on a compact disc. We'll take a loss at first, but we're gonna make it up with all these expensive CDs that we sell for $18 and price fix it with other people in the industry, which I will link that video at the end because it's a very interesting video. And of course, Sony was behind it and it worked. The Discman became the name. They didn't want it to be associated with the Walkman, this official Walkman. They thought about keeping the Walkman name because at that point, Walkman was kind of like Kleenex. Every portable cassette player was called a Walkman, but they were worried that it was just associated with cassette tapes. So they stuck with the name Discman. And that was also a gamble because they took away all this name recognition. Could they catch lightning in a bottle twice? Kind of, because if you breathed on this thing or walked with it or roller skated with it, it skipped. Sony presenta il Compact D50. Piccolo. All those skipping problems got taken care of. They got smaller, rechargeable batteries showed up, but it never quite became the cultural earthquake that the Walkman did. Where did you find a Discman? And by the late 90s, Shoney, so Shoney, Sony actually shifted the marketing from the Discman back to the Walkman. 50 million Discman slash Walkmans were shipped by 1998. Portable listening had become the default. The Walkman, the Discman, the MP3 player, and eventually the phone. But who started it all? Sony did, twice. You made my disc man skip. In 1997, in Korea, Shahan Information Systems created the MP Fan F10, the world's first portable MP3 player. In 1998, Edger Labs brought it to the US. And that same year, Diamond Multimedia released the Rio. I actually heard of this one, the PMP300. But did it matter? Yeah, because it was small and it was cheap, $199. It didn't skip. It's about the size of a deck of cards and early ones didn't have much storage capacity. They could fit between eight and 12 songs. But Diamond won and the MP3 player now was the future of portable music. You didn't have to have physical media at all. And from there, uh, a little company called Apple made the uh, iPod in 2001. I almost said iPhone, but no, it was the iPod in 2001. Huge storage, a really slick wheel experience for us. And the future of portable music shifted overnight. iPod was cool. This was old and clunky, but their first MP3 player, get this, 10 years late to the game. The thing about Sony that was way different from other Japanese companies is that they had a huge tolerance for risk. They had this crazy, just try it mentality that no other Japanese company had at the time. And did you know that the Walkman actually came from the Sony press man? which was an on-the-go recorder that journalists, kids, whoever used it, it recorded 
but they just stripped out a bunch of stuff, added some stereo heads and made this. And let's just try it. Created portable music, first on the Walkman and then on the Discman. But when the MP3 arrived, Sony scoffed at it. They didn't want to have anything to do with the MP3. You're ugly, you're disgusting, I'm gonna kill you. Instead, they doubled down with the mini disc. It was launched in 92 and it had a whole bunch of stuff that Sony wanted, like DRM, so copyright protection, proprietary software. It was slow, it was painful, and most importantly, it was locked down. Meanwhile, CDs were still cheap. Did you find your CD burner? CD burners are now everywhere. People wrote software to make the files on the CD into MP3s. And I think we know what happened later, but the mini disc never really caught on. Yet Sony kept pushing. Sony was stubborn to the end. And in the end, it wasn't Sony's technology that killed them. It was their ego. So Sony acted different than any other Japanese company did. And because of that, Sony got results that no other Japanese company did when it came to portable music. But once they lost that vision, once they lost that risk tolerance, well, they just became like any other Japanese company. And that visionary, the let's just try it guy at Sony, the man behind both the Walkman and the Discman, Nobody knows what really happened to him. Did Sony lose its edge when they lost him because he was the visionary risk taker? We'll never know. But here's what we do know. Without Sony, I don't know what the world would look like today. We still might be chained to our living room like that exchange student. However, their portable music dominance ended with the Discman. This was basically the beginning of the end. And you know those visionaries? Well, somewhere in Silicon Valley, Steve Jobs was like, let's take the whole wall of CDs and we'll put it in your pocket. And Sony could have done that, but they didn't do that. Now they're just a footnote in portable music history. If you like this video, check out some of the other videos I did about Sony. Uh, how they put malware on your computer with Neil Diamond. I will link that right up here and I'll link some other CD video right up here. Thank you so much for watching. You made my Discman skip. Where did you find a Discman?